welcome to Awake Ones. I'm Sally Poinsett Nash. I'm Lorraine Flaherty. And I'm Alexandra Whitman. And the topic of today's show is healing the healer. So, can you hear me? <laughs> no, not right now. I'm filming something. I need to have a recliner. I'm ready. <laughs> so, the first thing I want to know from both of you with the work that you do do you call yourselves healers? And are you okay with the word healer? And what's the emotion around it? <clears throat> I only call myself a healer when I can't think of anything else to kind of label it. And, you know, because I think in layman's terms, people know what a healer is generally. But I do think it's a bit of a minefield. There's a lot of connotations that the healer is going to fix you or rescue you or do something for you. And that's not, that's not our role. It's more like facilitator. Um, I like the word alchemist, but then in everyday life, not many people know exactly what an alchemist is. But really what a healer is there to do is to hold a safe space around you and be like a guide to help you work on and transform anything that you need to transform. And, and when I say transform or transmute or shift or change, because even though we do also use terms like clearing, you're not getting rid of anything. And we've talked about this in other videos when you're not actually, you're not getting rid of anything. It's more like loving it and embracing it and working through it so that you can shift the energy from one state to another. Um, so yeah, I, if anyone has suggestions, by the way, <laughs> for what else, you know, we can call ourselves because some of the wording, once you go down this spiritual path, it, it does get, and Sally and, and Laurie and I've had many of these conversations where it's like these labels, it does get a little bit complicated and you have to put it in a, in a way that people will understand, but you don't want to do it in a way that will disempower at the same time. So yeah, so I tend to just put my, my name on my website and then I've got a little Rumi quote, which is your essence is your wealth. And, and it's putting that back to you. It's your essence. It's not my essence. I'm not giving anything to you or taking anything from you or it's not magic. It's a gift that we all have. So it's about unlocking that in every person. So, Laurie, what's your take on healing? Yeah, same healing. thing, really. I think right from the beginning of the, the journey, and obviously I've tried and worked with so many different modalities and, and different things, and I've always been really, really clear when I'm working with people that it's not me doing the work. Mm -hmm. So I'm not responsible, and I make jokes about being the navigator or the, the spiritual GPS, so I can guide them to the place where they're going to get the information that they need so that they can do the work. And it's really important that people take ownership of their own healing journey. So as you rightly said, we can be facilitators, I think, or, or create that space, but we can never do it for people. And I think sometimes there is a, you know, there, there can be a tendency to think that somebody else can just fix things for you and that they can wave a magic wand. And I, if I had a pound for all of the people that I've had to say that to, that I would really love to have one of those in other lifetimes, maybe. Uh, in other dimensions, I have one, it works really well, but, in, them in, yes, <laughs> but in this lifetime, you know, we all as individuals have to take responsibility for our own healing journey. And sometimes people learn techniques or they create tools that can assist people on that journey. But it's really important that everyone is their own healer, really. So if... I mean, your healing aspect, you're, you're showing people and working with people to heal aspects of themselves, yeah. but you don't heal them. Um, right. But you do, you know, we've done inner child work together yeah. and, and you were the key to the healing of that inner child, um, where other kind of more conventional, traditional methods hadn't worked. Um, do you feel with the whole healer healing, you have to call yourself that in some way so that people can identify you and find you, especially online these days, you know, what are people looking for? Yeah. They're right. not looking for time traveling troubleshoot. No, they're not. They're not <laughs> but it's they super were. cool when they find you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, even, you know, when I wrote my book, he Healing Past Life Therapy, it's so much more because the, the work that I do incorporates so many different levels and so many different layers because we are multidimensional beings and I've recognized that you can't just heal one aspect. You can heal 
elements of the past life stuff, but then you have to take care of the inner child and what you've picked up from your ancestors, and then you have to take care of any energies that might be in the energy field that shouldn't be there, and then you have to take care of any negative beliefs or ideas that you've been carrying and habits that have been stuck that are just repeating. You know, there's so many aspects to it. And, yeah, it's just a bit of a minefield sometimes, I think, when you get caught in this one area, and the publishers were really keen when I was putting the book out there that I focus on the past life bit and I was trying to say to them but it's so much so more much than more. that and I didn't want to get pigeonholed as a past life therapist because it's so much bigger than that and so much more than that and I think that that has been my biggest challenge is finding a name to describe what I do so people ask me and I go I kind of you know now I'm almost referring to myself as being like a computer programmer you know, going in and, and you know <laughs> accessing the emotional hard drive of the mind and rewriting, or you know wiping files and changing it because I think people can relate to that. Well, it is. It's physics, isn't it? It is physics. Quantum it physics. is quantum right. physics. Yeah, and a bit of quantum yeah. physics. Yeah. And, and my logical left brain likes that idea because mm. even though I work with very esoteric processes, I still need to understand how things are going to work and how a person can dramatically change their life when you've just potentially had a conversation about a story that has now changed. Mm -hmm. It didn't make sense to me. But where science and spirituality are starting to align now and, and changes to DNA and changes to energetic vibrations and to structures w within the energy field of a person, you know, when things are rewritten, then actually what, you know, whatever the input is, the output is, is then, and then the feedback loop of what you get back is gonna be transformed. So it's really difficult, and that's why, I mean, and I think this was working with you when we did a branding day, when you were trying to get me to describe what I do, and time traveling <laughs> troubleshooter. We don't the, challenge her at all. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, that was about the only one that came up, and I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, that is kind of it, really. But I'm not sure for the average person that that is gonna relate to them at all. No, I think once they find you, do some work with you, get to know yeah. you, it's pretty cool to have a time travelling troubleshooter in your pocket. Yes. Um, for yes. those times where yeah. you just need to disappear. <laughs> um, like a female Doctor Who going in and, you know, dealing with some of the the troubles that are, that are going on out there and, you know, whipping back out again when, when things have been put right. And, you know, for, for both of you, really, people must come in and just dump their stuff in your space, on you. Um, you obviously have ways to manage that, but... There must be times where it gets through and you pick up a lot of the stuff that people have, have dumped. I mean, how do you manage that in a session or after a session? It's interesting for me because Laurie and I kind of work very similarly, but we kind of come from opposite ends of yeah. the spectrum. So some of the time I am going in and, and helping people do the work for themselves because I'm a seer and I can kind of see the bits where people can't see for themselves. So but I'll always kind of help them see it. and. The majority of the time, the healing and transformation occurs just in the awareness. Mm -hmm. So if I'm bringing something to somebody's awareness or helping them to feel it or see it, and the thing with most people on the planet now, especially the people that, that are attracted to my, my work, are people that are kind of already on the path, they're very aware of themselves, they, they, they already have that inner knowing and intuition. So I can't tell them something that's not true, they will just know instantly. So the minute I'm kind of, I'm tuning in, I work with a pendulum, I also work with their inner knowing and intuition and teach techniques to kind of feel the energy and feel it. And, I, and I'll always put it back to them and say, does that feel like a truth to you? Does that resonate with you? And always, no matter how, one of my clients calls me the high priestess of woo-woo, <laughs> um, which I'm a bit allergic to the weird word yeah. and all of that. I'm trying to embrace it more and more, but I think that's because I was, you know, did have the piss taken out of me when I was younger. But <laughs> but I'm embracing it more and more now. And it is, it's, you know, Sally and I've come up with the word out there because it is, it's out there. Some of what we're doing is really pushing the boundaries of what people are used to. Yeah. But I think that um, people coming in and, and expecting you to hear, this is my stuff, fix me. It, it's never about that. It's never about that. It's like, okay, this is happening. Breathe, take stock. There's always a reason and there's always a blessing. And that's where I find like that, that we can be of the best service is kind of showing people that fresh perspective, that higher perspective on anything that's going on with them and saying, hang on a minute, this is not the end of the world. This is not you know, going to be the ruining of you. It's probably going to be the making of you. And just helping them to see, you know, piece together those threads of that bigger tapestry 
that they're just not seeing the, the bigger piece. Like they've got a few pieces of the puzzle and can't see how it's all going to fit together. And then we can help them to piece those bits together and, and see the bigger picture of their life. And that's where it's more empowering. So I think it, it, it's, a, it's also a, a bit of a task when people don't want to look at their own stuff and they are expecting you to fix them. And I did have a big challenge with that a number of years ago. And that's, you know, I was working in a place where I was doing sort of readings, although it was my brand of readings, it was more kind of doing what I do, but under the term re reading. And I had one person who came in for a reading. It was a very aggressive person. And in the end, they were an absolute blessing because it made me go, whoa, why have I attracted this? And I thought something needs to change here. And I don't want to be putting out into the world just that, you know, my door's open to anyone that's not going to value what I do or, or value me. Because uh, another conversation we were having earlier is that, you know, be of service, but make sure you're being served. And, you know, this person came in, it was like, fold their arms, prove it to me. Tell me, tell me my future. Tell me what's happening. Tell me what I need to know. And I told them the truth <laughs> and they didn't like it. And I lovingly told them the truth, but it made me really go away and look at what intention I was putting out there. And so I made my little declaration to the universe and I was like, I don't want to waste anyone's time. I don't want anyone wasting my time. Only send me the people I can really help and the people that will really resonate with what I'm doing because it's like putting a square peg in a round hole. There's no point. Like if it's a mismatch, I don't want to sit there for an hour, have someone pay money and not get something out of what I'm giving them. So I think intention is really, really important. And it's always worth kind of checking in on yourself. Like we, we've, we've done other episodes on healthy boundaries and that is 100% where it's at. It's like always navigating, right, how much of this can I kind of do for this person? Where do I need to hand that bit back to them? And I always give my clients like homework and things for them to go away and do and little techniques that they can use and just like get them in training to kind of clear their own energy and stuff. So. Have you ever found that you've left a session feeling completely drained? Not these days. No. Not these days because I just don't. I don't, All my clients tend to, well, the ones I've worked with for a while always know like that they can do it themselves because they've kind of got to that place through the work that we've done that they know they've got it. And there are times when I've said, like, we're done now. You can go off out into the world safely. I'm still here, but you don't need me at the moment. Um, but, yeah, it happens less and less these days. I haven't had that happen for quite some time. And it used to happen, like, say if I was working for another venue or something like that, and there's expectations that, you know, yeah. I just don't. And I don't put myself up to be tested, you know. It's like I don't do readings in fortune-telling circus performance kind so of for anyone else kind of coming into what you're doing and working in, in this kind of spiritually based space, would you say it's about intention and healthy boundaries? Yeah. First and foremost, yeah. And you have to be very grounded yeah. because even though the work that I do is very multidimensional and, and, I, and I work a lot with what we call the Akashic record or the soul record, uh, some of it will seem really fantastical. The first thing I say to my clients is, welcome. Please keep an open mind. <laughs> um, that's the one thing I ask of my clients because we might go off on this fantastical journey. I will see a big spectrum, like it's it's infinite and it's divine and it's so multifaceted. And I'll say some of this is going to sound a bit out there, but it will all translate back into what's going on in your life in the here and the now. So even though I might be seeing something that looks like a sci-fi film, the beliefs and the emotions that are involved and the contracts that we're clearing, they're like, that's happening now with that same person. That person's doing this to me now. And I'm like, that's where yeah. it started. So it all make, it all ends up inevitably mm. honing in on, you know, because the, always the point is how it's affecting you here. So we'll always unravel it and then come back to it. And I'll go, right, now back to Earth. Here, this is how it's affecting you in this life. And they'll be like, yeah. <laughs> And, you know, so many people kind of get the goosebumps and all of that. So. Yeah. And Lorraine, I know from past experience that, <laughs> yeah. that past life um, sessions with you can mm. be quite traumatic mm -hmm. um, and emotional. Mm. And do Some of them can be very nice as well. I'm sure I've <laughs> yeah. yet to experience one as well. So. <laughs> um, do you ever pick up what other people are 
experiencing and you know do you leave sessions feeling drained do you yeah well this is a question that I get asked a lot particularly because my sessions are really long and getting longer and longer because there's so many layers especially the past life story but then it's what the soul had agreed to in spirit realms and then all the people that had agreed to work with them and you know day trips to your past life exactly day trips your session a day trip (laughs) dip in and out so sometimes it's three four hours she did ten hours session i have done i have done yeah seven and ten hours (laughs) and then people say to me afterwards oh my god and i get this a lot you must be exhausted and my answer is always i am contentedly tired because it's so fascinating and it's so exhilarating that when you're in it you don't notice Mm -hmm. and sometimes I might do two in a day and I get to the end of the day and and this is why sometimes if I don't get back to people it's because I work till about 11 (laughs) at night sometimes and I I'm, I'm finished the session and I've been on full alert watching everything monitoring everything scouting just making sure that there are no stones left unturned by the end of it and then the client leaves and I close the door and then I just go <laughs> and my energy field is low but I'm not taking on board their stuff okay. that's the difference which I think I might have done years beforehand and partly and I thought it was going to save time but actually it doesn't seem to be saving any time so I might have to sort of redress what I'm doing but it was one of the exercises in my book which is where I get people to start recognizing their own patterns and their own story and so I get them to track all the major events and the key people that appeared in their life from birth up to about three or four, and then writing out what happened from four till about eight or nine, and then from nine to about 11 or 12, and then you know, from, from there to 20, 20 to 30, and then onwards in 10 year blocks. And it's amazing how much people have already realized when they come in, because they see the patterns. They can start to recognise the, the bits that are being repeated, the same kind of people coming in. And that was meant to help <laughs> to get them to identify all that stuff. But of course, then when they come in, even though they send me <laughs> the information, it's still fascinating and you still need to go through to, to work out how this is affecting the, post, the person emotionally and, and the impact that it's having. So, yeah, I might have to um, <laughs> find you, another way. Do you way. say to people before they come in, like, don't make any plans after the session because we might go into time. Yeah. 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 I've got a date yeah. now. I've got to get something. Yeah. No, obviously. You don't want to have But, but that is the thing that I will always check with people at the beginning because you can, you can round it up quicker. But most people, when they come in, they may have waited years and years and years to do the work. Mm. And they may have tried all kinds of other therapies. And most people come to hypnosis or this kind of work as a, a last resort. Yeah. So sometimes they are a bit desperate. So they just want to get stuck in. So mm-hmm. if I say to them, are you okay for time? Because I'm not a clock yeah. watcher. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not a, oh, you know, your time's up, you have to leave. You can't do that. When someone's in the midst of learning the most important thing in their session, for me, you can't just go, right, that's it. You know, out you go. I, I'd rather just go in and do it. So I have to organize my day so that I've got lots of time either side. Because I do need downtime for me as well. You know, I need to clear my head, I need to eat something, so I'm energised for the, the, the next one. So that's what I've learned. Taking care of myself means ensuring that I've got a big gap in between my sessions mm-hmm. and that I do, you know, drink water and I do eat something grounding and, you know, I make sure I have the energy to be able to guide that person to find the answers for themselves. So, yeah. Okay, and then also, you know, when aspects of yourself need healing yeah and it's not work you can do yourself <laughs> i know you you both work with each other and, yeah but are, are there other kind of third party routes you use to healing or you know do you go off and do other people's retreats it's like where are you at with yeah well can i can i share something aspects of yourself something really funny that we did because i kept saying oh god if only if i could take off my own head and do the therapy on myself because i know where to go and what to look <laughs> for and then with regression work you can actually do a thing that's called working by proxy and working by proxy means that somebody else can volunteer to be a representative of the person so say it's a child that's too young or somebody's sick or you know they're they're just unable to do the session as long as permission is given then somebody else can be the volunteer so i got this one to be my proxy and did the session on myself through her which was hilarious so That's it's interesting. It's double yeah. whammy of like already the, my ability to tune in, but in yeah. trance. Right. So it was fascinating as it well. It was really oh, fascinating. God, you did this and yeah. you did that. And I think we did 
two, didn't we? We, look, we looked at your birth, and to, then we also yeah. looked at... A, a, and it was a really a interesting husband. life, wasn't it? I think my father really had been a policeman, and he had gone off to... I think he'd gone off to fight or gone off to war or something, never came back, we thought he was dead. And then somebody turned up one day, it was in the 50s. I think I ended up being a hairdresser, you hadn't did. I, in the 50s. Yeah. And it had affected me my whole life. I think I'd been a bit of a, a drinker, not really had any relationships, because I felt this loss of my father. And then somebody turned up one day and said, don't know how to break the news to you, but actually your father didn't die. He actually lives in this town over here and he has another whole family. Mm. And it was just really yeah, traumatic, yeah, wasn't it? I'm really detailed. And, what I and then we went to find him. It's really interesting though, because by the proxy work, like I yeah. had kind of assumed that it would be just like doing a normal past life where you are the person going through it all. Mm. Yeah. But it wasn't. I was like this neutral observer throughout the whole thing it was like i was looking down on the scene that's cool mm. it was like a whole different perspective yeah but we still unraveled all the contracts yeah. and the belief but it, it's sort of how i see when i'm seeing when i'm right. doing healing for someone but in deep trance and really in the story and really like it's like you're there but it was like i was hovering over every scene and i could see her as the baby and i could see the different player key yeah. players and but it was almost like um I suppose the difference for me is her story of me observing it was almost clearer than when I'm when when she's regressing me and I'm seeing my own stuff because right. you're impartial and you're yeah. you know and so the detail almost seemed even sharper and even clearer like like being in a virtual reality film or something it was really interesting, That's interesting. yeah yeah, yeah. and really then cool. and then Al tried to do a session with me and I said do it your way you know I don't because oh I God. I can <laughs> drop in and see past life so easily I just have to meditate and I go in and I thought no I really want to let I really want to experience the way Al works. So, anyway, so I close my. She starts looking, and then at a certain point, shutters went down. She starts describing a scene, and then the shutters went down, and bling, yeah, suddenly I was where she had been describing, and I said, "Oh, I'm really sorry. I think I'm there." She I took over. See. She takes over. My higher self was like, no, don't want anybody else watching. You just go in and do it. She's got to do it her way. <laughs> I didn't want to. I wasn't really allowed. Like, no. literally, I, I was seeing suddenly all my sight. It just went dunk. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. I'm not allowed to see this. So yeah. I, then I had to be there. Because, fine. like, she didn't and follow her lead and ask the question. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> Damn, I love seeing it. Yeah. I want to be the one seeing it. <laughs> She wants to be the one getting the story, so it's like, ah. Of course, of course. Um, but also, a lot of people won't have this as no, a dynamic. As, you know, if, if there are people who are working as a therapist or they're kind of in that service well, role... We don't just work with each other no. either. We have got we have other friends in the industry, obviously, in the industry. <laughs> and showbiz. Show pony. Show um, <laughs> um, We do have other friends, and, you know, I think it's really, really important to be discerning as to who you work with, too. Because, you know, even though we're both healers, <laughs> whatever you call us, we might not be the right healer for you. And, you know, it's, it's very important that you trust your gut feeling yeah. and your intuition with regards as to who you're guided to. Don't just think, oh, because they're doing it, they're going to have my best interests at heart. Because, I mean, you know, we all have karma. You could have karma with that person, but it's all part of the learning. But, you know, over the years, obviously, we have very close friends who are also in the industry. And then I also, like, if there is, you know, like, we always will help each other out. We have other people that we can call on. But if there is something new that I need, that oh, I get curious too. I'm like, oh, what else is out there? Who can I go and, like, have a go, you know, test things out with? And I often get led on, you know, goose chases that Laurie has to then come and um, pick me from. I'm like, oh, I've got to go do shamanic work. And then, <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Um, I think I've learnt my lesson with a lot of it, but I think your your intuition, your gut feeling, yeah. is the best thing that you have. And also to remember that when we say healer, heal thyself, it's not just about healer as the professional healer, heal thyself. Every single human being is a healer. Every single person on this planet has healing gifts, and whether you're doing it as a profession or not. It's you can develop it and you can learn to do your own work on yourself. And I think that's the number one most empowering thing that you can do for yourself. Like, and we're the guinea pigs. You know, she used to be here a makeup artist. I used to be a journalist. We got on this path because we healed ourselves, you know. And the same with you, Sally. Like, you're, you know, down the rabbit hole now, mate. But what about you from the, from the perspective of coming into yeah. this work as a, as a client? 
Um, for me, I, I prefer the timeline. Mm. Um, I like to be efficient. I am a troubleshooter, but in a different space, you know, in kind of a business brand capacity. And for me, it's getting to the heart of the problem. Tweaking whatever it is that's out of sync there, yeah. and then the whole thing suddenly is back mm. where it should be. Um, and, you know, I can do that fairly quickly because I work with my intuition <laughs> very closely. And to come in and do sessions where, you know, maybe I've been in psychotherapy or counselling while it was actually happening, um, things from my childhood, you know, 20 years of, of trying to break a pattern is infuriating to yeah. me. Um, living with the noise that I was living with is infuriating to mm. me. It's not necessary mm. for it to be dragging out. Mm. Yeah. You know, go and have two years of psychotherapy. Why am I still talking about the same thing two years later? And I'm five. And I'm not changing the way I'm thinking. It's mm. still there. It's still noise. And you know, going to see Lorraine was probably my. I was at the end of my, <laughs> my end of my therapeutic tether, and um, I just didn't know what else to do. And a friend of mine had done the past life regression, and I read that there was inner child work. It's like, right, I'm going to try it. And we did the seven hours. <laughs> I've also learned not to have any alcohol after the session because about two hours later, I have a temperature drop and then a body drop and I'm done. <laughs> um, but it was such a... I didn't realise what we'd done in the session mm -hmm. and it only occurred to me in the days that followed. But the changes that were made in seven hours mm -hmm. versus 20 years of finding people trying something, sticking with it for months it's not working for me, moving on, life gets in the way, put it on pause. It was so boring to me. Yeah. Um, but to be able to kind of shut down that noise and, you know, I describe it as you wiped my emotional hard drive, not of any positive emotions, just the, the emotions that traumatise me mm -hmm. on a daily basis as a grown-up, which mm -hmm. shouldn't be happening. Yeah. It, it, this stuff happened in my childhood. It should have been long gone and dealt yeah. with um, and integrated into who I am. So I like, for me, that my favourite part is the, the time yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and the speed in which you can shift things yeah, by working in kind of different yeah. dimensions, realities, you know, yeah. however you choose to describe it. But yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I don't have the patience to, yeah. you know, I did do five years of psychosynthesis and if I'm honest, you know, there were some really good things that came out of it real good awarenesses, I stopped drinking for a, a long time, you know, I completely reset my relationship with alcohol, which wasn't very healthy and now is, most of the time, <laughs> but it is, and uh, there, there were some real positives that came out, but I absolutely categorically know that there were sessions that made a difference, and everyone that made a difference was the, were the ones where I closed my eyes, went inside and she asked me to find an answer for something or we did something creative where I drew something or I, I, I used my you know, my subconscious to actually access data and information and all of the sessions if I'm really honest where I just sat and talked about my problem and talked about what was going on I left feeling awful and I would go out and sit it in my car it, it did it, it just yeah. it, it compounded it and I would sit in my car because I wouldn't cry in front of her because I was not going to look vulnerable or emotional which was the whole point and so I would lose a whole day practically every week because I couldn't actually function. And so partly for me, you know, I, I think I did the five years therapy because I knew one day that I was going to, you know, become some sort of a therapist and I didn't know what form it was going to take. I thought it might have even been psychosynthesis because it was more spiritual and it seemed more psychologically based. So, you know, more, um, more of a clinical approach rather than to out there and uh, when I started researching I just thought it's not enough it, it's too long and I don't want to sit and just listen for an hour I want to get stuck in I want to get stuck in and I want to help people change it change it now and don't let it don't you know it shouldn't be allowed to go back which is what I kept doing mm. you know I was running the same patterns and the same things going on and on and on and there was just no respite from it. So, yeah. I think in that in those instances, and just from my own experience, the therapy itself becomes another pattern yeah. that you then need to look at or you need to break in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, my therapist was amazing. She was a you know, really incredible woman. I had a lot of time with her, really 
respected her and everything that she did and I know that she had my best intentions at heart but I just think that there were limitations mm. to that work mm. and I think that the answer is inside you the answer is in the subconscious and if you go to that space however you go whether it's you go in there and find it whether you trust your intuition or whether you drop into a trance state and someone gives you the question and makes you go look for it it's it's mm. there it's 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 in that inner space it's not you know and, and I think talking about it can give you some insight for sure yeah. you know things can go oh you can get an idea about something but it isn't going to change it no I, I found it particularly useful with grief yeah because it was someone to go and see and just of course have, yeah have that kind of the luxury and privilege just of having an hour to just sit with someone and just be like you know what this is horrible this is just a horrible place it will pass yeah absolutely um but with grief you, there is no shortcut no you've got to go through it yeah. and again you know one of the things I'm really clear about is that there are different techniques that work for different people in different ways mm. in different times. And, you know, doing that talking therapy probably saved my life. So I'm not saying don't do talking therapy, no, no. but I'm saying use lots of different forms and techniques yeah. to, to shift. Find, find, what find the person you resonate with, yeah. find a technique that feels right for you. It's, it's really important when doing that journey that you do it in the right way. And that's the thing, there's so many new techniques nowadays. I think that one of the most important things that I've learnt, both as a healy, because we're all still human. I like that. A healy. 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 Not healer. With a double healy. E. Yeah, with a double E. Like Sally. Sally. She's got three E's. Um, <laughs> but but one, of the, one of the most important things I learnt was that, you know, you can't, you can, you can, you're, not, you're never stuck with anything yeah. for a start. And a lot of people say there's no quick fix. There is, but sometimes you have to go through it to qu heal it quickly. Yeah. And that sometimes means leaning into those emotions. Mm -hmm. It's not about going around them or, you know, pulling them out. Like there are, obviously, I know a lot of different techniques. I trained in like things like theta healing and I did, did everything. Psych K and all those bits. And those bits are like, you know, there's the emotion code that's out now where you can teach yourself to clear the trapped emotions. And sometimes I can go in and check, like I'm always like following that guidance, can we go in and ask the higher self just to release it? Sometimes that person absolutely has to walk through it yeah. and go through it. And this is something that we're seeing, I mean, I'm seeing it every day where people are experiencing this wilderness or this dark night of the soul thing, where you're absolutely being what feels like broken apart by your circumstances and the quick fixes aren't working. And a lot of the work that I do is just to hold people as they walk through that and let them know, you know, there is going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. You're not stuck in anything, yeah. but it's bringing you into a bigger, deeper awareness of who you are as an emotional being because we can't see these emotions as being our enemy anymore. You know, like they are our, they are our inner GPS, aren't they? They're, yeah. our, they're our, totally. our way of navigating through the world and learning more about ourselves and growing and, and healing ourselves. Yeah. And every time I kind of work with people on like a trapped emotion or something, it's usually trapped because either they're not looking at it, they're suppressing it, or they think it's the enemy, or mm. and they're not understanding that all of our emotions are trying to help us, even the icky ones. And when you kind of like, I get them to visualize the emotion almost as another being that they're having a conversation with and saying, right, how are you helping me? sometimes that emotion will actually be an entity. So when they put it into that package of like, you know, I've got a, a friend who I've been talking to who's like, you know, just embarking on this. And she cleared three entities from herself the other day because she realised the emotion was something that wasn't actually hers. So people are like, the, our own healing gifts are accelerating now, I think, with the energies on the planet too. So it is, we're all learning to do this in our own way. So again, it is, you're never stuck lean into your journey and hold yourself in love embrace yourself be your own cheerleader and be your own therapist even if you do need to seek help from somebody else and um you'd be gentle with yourself i think is really important as well because you, you can't be hard on yourself and keep pushing yourself it's really um very important yeah and would you have any top line pieces of advice to leave us with today because well, we are wrapping up. Yeah, I think that the most important thing is to ask questions about your experience, but not asking, why is this happening to me? Mm. The question is, why did I choose this? Mm. 
what is it that I'm supposed to learn, what is it showing me, if people or events, especially things that keep turning up in your life and press buttons that keep getting pressed, there's going to be a, a, a cause, there's going to be a reason, and I don't mean that you know, there's a reason for everything, sometimes I think there might be, but it really is about owning the fact that somewhere on your soul's journey, that this is, it's showing you something within you that needs to be addressed, something that needs to be healed, transmuted, whatever the language is, and that it is about absolute self-acceptance and accepting that on our soul's journey, we experience and have to experience everything, good, bad, light, dark, and there's no judgment in the spirit realms. And I think sometimes people turn up and they go, maybe I was someone really bad in a previous life. Maybe that's why I'm suffering. I used to say that. I used to say that a lot. <laughs> all the time. And now I realise that it's not punishment. It's just balance. Mm -hmm. So if someone's experiencing hardship, then in some other lifetime, they're going to be having a, you know, a really easy time. If they're experiencing a lack of love, there will be other lifetimes where there was extraordinary amounts of love. Mm -hmm. You know, If they're a healer, maybe in another lifetime, they were a persecutor. It's, we, we balance it out. We have to experience all of the extremes. And so I think owning that, who you are and everybody else on the planet it's all perfect it's all perfect in its imperfection and when we stop judging and actually just going you know what well done you just chose a really really difficult lesson a really difficult life and i salute you for that i don't like it i'm not going to choose to necessarily have anybody you know doing bad things to me but i can salute you on your journey and send you unconditional love and I think when we get to that point where we can unconditionally love ourselves and everybody on the planet and we come back to love, then the planet gets healed. You know, it's quite easy, really. <laughs> and I think on that note... Oh, I have one more Go on, then, before we salute everybody and send them unconditional love. I think um, simplicity is sometimes really important, too. And one of the things that I do regularly is to pull myself out of everything, out of the world, away from all people, and just cocoon myself, not for very long, usually it's like a 20 minute salt bath of an evening three times a week, but I used to think of myself as a huge extrovert, and now I think I'm actually an extroverted introvert, mm -hmm. and I'm if I don't like have to. our time and reset, like when we're on the road in California, I was like, haven't had my bath, <laughs> I'm not coming out tonight, girls, I had to yeah. shut the doors, and just go in and either meditate or even just be with yourself. Like you yeah. don't have to do nature. anything. Switch off nature, simplicity. I think this is kind of what we're returning to as humanity is mm. learning that sometimes the simple things in life bring you the most joy. And we and we're in this. We've been in this pattern of I need more of this and consumerism and everything. But you know, part of the dark night of the soul will be financial pairing back you might lose friends, lots of stuff can happen and your world will be turned upside down. But if you ground, first of all, make sure that you're really present and come back to the little things that are important. And that is, to me, what is the absolute anchor point, is the simplicity, you know, I mean, because obviously when you're doing a lot of this bigger work and you're unraveling things, you can go into sometimes a bit of a spiritual crisis or like, oh my god what's going on it can be a bit overwhelming so always ground and come back to you and just love yourself yeah. and find your tribe because yeah. there's nothing like having people that understand what you're talking about and where you can literally be held in a space where there isn't any judgment about the stuff that you're going through and you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to be smiling all the time and Pollyanna about things you know <laughs> proof <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's one of the wonderful things about what we're creating and the community that we're trying to create with this is that it is about accepting everybody in all of their forms, good and bad. And on that note, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> we can just keep going on. We're going to salute you yeah. and send you unconditional love. Thanks for Thank watching. You.